Hi, I'm Paul Peterson. Welcome to Aging Well in LA. As you might suspect, seeing that emergency vehicle drive out of here, this is a show about preparedness, disaster preparedness, not only for our seniors, but for our pets as well. Please stay tuned. Today we have a very interesting program for you. It's about disaster preparedness for seniors and importantly for our pets. So please stay tuned. You're going to find this very interesting. I want to introduce three guests, one of whom is a dear friend, Laura Trejo, general manager of the Los Angeles Department of Aging and a real good pal. And here on my right, Anna Burton. And Anna, welcome to our show. I look forward to hearing what you have to say. Thank you. Okay. And on my far left, we have Captain Stacy Gerlich from the Los Angeles Fire Department. Now, given the mix, we got seniors we're going to talk about. We're going to talk about pet safety in the event of emergencies and how seniors can help on all of those things. So, Laura, let me start with you. You, we actually have formal programs at the Department of Aging in the event of a disaster of whatever size. We do. We're very concerned. We want to make sure that older adults and their families are preparing now mm -hmm. for any kind of an emergency, whether it be a medical emergency, whether yes. it be a disaster emergency, like an earthquake or mm -hmm. fire or any other emergency that may be. Planning is really a, a key element. Uh, so that folks have the information, the resources that they need in order to be able to do well in, uh, in any kind of situation. For example, we have been uh, conducting, uh, in partnership with the Department of Emergency Management, uh, Go Kit presentations. These yes. are kits that we help to develop so, and that we prepare uh, an educational lecture with it so that seniors can begin to have the building blocks of how to prepare an emergency right. pack. So something that you may need to be able to uh, walk out of your house in case that you need to evacuate quickly. Right. We also have been uh, for many, many years working in partnership with first responder agencies with our file of life program. Yes. Another very critical piece of information that people need to put together and have ready to be able to take with them or have available and then home in case of an emergency. We also do a lot of work in collaboration with all of the organizations in the city and the county to make sure that we're all preparing and sharing the same information with seniors. And, and it's interesting, uh, a disaster can be as small as just your block. You know, a couple houses catching fire, you've got a problem. It could be in your home alone. Uh, well, th so that, that too. That's also critical. Right. So we have to prepare for as many uh, kind of contingencies as we need to. Right. Well, and it's wonderful to hear that there's a coordinated plan. Now, Anna, uh, there is a new emergency preparedness center. That I didn't know about this. When was this built? Uh, the city opened its new emergency operations center um, several years ago. Uh, it was bond funded thanks to our taxpayers. Wow, good. It's 80,000 square feet and it houses um, both the emergency management department, fire dispatch for 911, and some LAPD resources. So when a disaster happens, we call upon all of our city agencies and departments as well as our partner agencies to come and help us coordinate to make sure we have all the resources necessary to combat the event, um, get people to safety, and to be able to start the recovery process for the city. I got gotcha. you. Now one of the reasons I was actually excited about this show is I know, like me, many of our viewers are a little reluctant to undertake the job of getting together a go kit and making the plans, who do I call and all the rest, but on behalf of their pets, they may be more motivated. And uh, pets need a go kit too. You need to be able to take care of them. Absolutely. And I think that's one of the hardest things is having people look at what do they really need. Yes. If they are asked to leave their home quickly, what do they need to take with them? And in some cases, it's, it's their service animal. Yes. So if they well, have well. a service animal, what should they take? Um, if they have medications or, or glasses or, or any kind of devices, what will they immediately need for right. 24, 42, 72 hours? And if they're going to a friend's house, what can they expect? 
if they're going to a family member, what do they expect? Or if they're going to a shelter where they don't know what to expect, right. that's the situation that we're trying to prepare for. So it's a go kit and it's equipment and it's any supplies that they may need specific to their own personal needs. And mm -hmm. We'll help them ask those questions, you know, if you have hearing aids or, or glasses or, or shoes or a, a cane. And if you don't have those, the city will be able to help you get those at the shelter to help you recover and stabilize yourself. Is there a central resource where our senior community or caregivers can call or access the Internet to get this kind of information, what, what to prepare for? Absolutely. Our city has, um, we've developed a website, mm -hmm. and it's called Ready LA. Ready LA. Ready LA. Got, got that. Okay. So you can go there and you can download checklists. You can download um, and look, in, look at the types of disasters that the Los Angeles area is preparing for. Mm. Earthquakes, floods, fires, all of them basically. Mm. And then see, mm. see what you need um, and just and read about the types of disasters so you're not shocked when you hear you know what those terms mean. What does it mean to evacuate? Or if they say shelter in place or mm -hmm. if they say take your supplies with you, what does that really mean to you? And then to listen to the radio so when we say evacuate, know where to go. Don't go yes. to somewhere that you presumed yesterday because it might not be the same place based on right. the event that we're looking at. Right. Well, Captain Gerlich, you're on the firing line. You're going to be the first people there generally if you can get there. Yeah. Uh, what are the kinds of things that concern you as, as part of the, our uh, emergency response team? Well, you know, I think that the most obvious thing that we have here is the fact that we have, you know, four million people that live in the city of L.A. in about 470 square miles. So we already know that the infrastructure is uh, quite crowded. Yes. And uh, what we really need people to understand, and not just seniors, but, but family, everyone, is that uh, we all have a responsibility. Mm -hmm. So make a kit, have a plan, be informed, make sure that you understand uh, what's available to you, um, having different routes to go from point A to point B. Um, if you are dependent on technology, um, you know, you need to also know how to read an actual map, a paper map. Right. Um, so, you know, so I mean, I think that we need to talk about these things right. because it's true. You know, we have four generations living right now. Um, and we have different ways of thinking and di different ways of doing things and comfort levels as well. From the fire department, though, really what helps us is that people have a plan. People are ready to go to leave when they are asked to leave. Right. Because if they don't, then we have to put resources on their home or, you know, to provide protection for them. Right. Um, obviously, that's what we're here for. But in that big event, which it is hard for us, you said it early on, is uh, it's difficult to get into that thought process, that mentality of saying, yes. oh, you know, I have to get this kit together. I have to do this. I have to do that. We don't really have a lot of devastating, catastrophic events that have happened to us we had the Northridge quake um, in 94, but w that was more localized. And if you look at things that happen around us, like you know Katrina, or you look at right. uh, the earthquake and the tsunami in Japan, and you look at some of the third world countries where um, you know construction is different, building codes are different. Um, the bottom line is, if we had that, it might be a little bit different in terms of our of our thought process, our mindset to be more prepared right. and to take it a little bit more seriously. But, you know, that's just human nature. Well, I know some of the images that were most disturbing about Katrina, uh, beyond the sense of hopelessness with the people, were the pets that Absolutely. were left behind. And firefighters and EMTs, they were rescuing pets when people needed saving. You go, wait a second, a little better plan here might have helped out. I'm hoping that people and the concerns for their pets, things like microchipping their pets, having a photograph of your pet, its papers, uh, will motivate people to um, to take care of their own needs as well. You see that all the time, and our seniors are pretty good about responding. They are, and um, you know, one of the things that we also have to remember is not only are we planning for ourselves and our families, but families also need to, uh, neighbors need to keep an eye on each other. Exactly. It's really important that really uh, we take the opportunity to at least know who's around us, yeah. because those folks may be actually quite the first uh, responders of any Absolutely. situation occurring. And so I, I want to encourage seniors uh, to really uh, take that to heart in their families. Uh, another area that we often overlook is any kind of memory difficulty. 
This is the time to plan. If you have a loved one, an older adult that has a memory problem, we need to have a, a, a recent photograph in case there's something where they need to be connected. That's been a consistent finding in all of the major disasters across right. our country is that persons with cognitive difficulties or memory problems become disconnected to their families and then it becomes very difficult to reconnect them. So I want to encourage families in our community to please take a recent photograph so that they can provide it to someone else, uh, have the, the basic information of that person right. written in the back, something that you can readily give. That should be in the emergency preparedness plan and in the kit that you utilize just like we do with younger children that may not be able to identify their name their parents and their address the same thing may happen with an older adult who's vulnerable we need to do that we need to identify any kind of uh, equipment needs that those who are disabled have uh, this is really the opportunity for all our families to take stock as Anna said um, what do we need to have ready in case we need to be evacuated mm -hmm. captain was telling us that um, to the degree that we have all that prepared, it's going to go a lot easier in being able to um, get us stabilized yes, well, and, and back to normal. And we possible. might not be in our home. We may be That's miles right. away. That's we could right. be out of the country, for goodness sake. And mm -hmm. how do you coordinate with everybody if the services are down? Absolutely. And I think one of the things that we've learned, and we do look at disasters in not just the United States, but in other countries, yes. and say, what did they experience and what can we learn? Mm -hmm. And we've learned a tremendous about is that um, anyone in the city, if you're asked to evacuate and you have second thoughts because you have a pet, bring your pet with you. Mm -hmm. Don't don't second guess it. Bring it and we'll make those accommodations at the shelter. We work with animal services, we work with the nonprofit organizations, and we look at ways to support the whole community. Mm -hmm. So um, we're working very closely with the Red Cross. We've revised a lot of the ways that we do shelter people now to make sure that we um, look at how caregivers are supported. Mm -hmm. And that's one of the things I wanted to talk about is if a family member is dependent on a caregiver, yes. talk to the caregiver, talk to the organization and find out what their plan is. And so if that caregiver can't get to their, the family that they support, what is their plan? How will they communicate with both the person that's dependent on that and to be able to evacuate or get them to safety? And or, or if they're alone with their charge, how can they make medical decisions that may be necessary? They may need authorization. Exactly. Or if they need help evacuating or yes. any of those other things that they depend on, is that look at those now and so that in a disaster that it'll be much easier for mm -hmm. them to get around and get what they need. And it's not, it is not that complicated. When you see the forms, in five minutes you can figure it out. You know, you can write down those numbers. Is it helpful to people or for the emergency respond, first responders uh, if they are met at the door or at least outside of the dwelling we say, I have special needs here. Is that helpful? Well, sure, absolutely. I mean, there are obvious signs that we would, that we would see, that we mm -hmm. would look for. An, a ramp. Yes, uh, of course. Railings mm -hmm. and, um, you know, things of that nature or a van or a car that had a lift gate on it, you mm -hmm. know, those types of sure. things. So, so our situational awareness is, is pretty keen, obviously. Mm -hmm. um, but it's always helpful if someone can meet us because it takes away, you know, that, that component of do we need to go seek somebody out to ask this question or verify what we, what we are seeing. You know, that may not be the case. It may be they just moved in. And, and the house was already equipped for, for something like that. But well, I'm, I'm hoping people take this to heart. I, there is much more information available to people on all sorts of websites and, and numbers to call. Um, and, and thank you, Laura, and thank you, Stacy and Anna, for joining us today and giving us just kind of the tip of the iceberg of the information that you should access and utilize in the event of a disaster. At the Department of Aging, we realize the importance of helping people be ready. Be ready for a disaster or an emergency that could come up. In Los Angeles, we know that we might have all kinds of disasters, anything from a fire to police activity to some medical emergency, but we really never know what's going to happen. Today's focus is on the inevitable, earthquakes. We know that in Los Angeles, we will have earthquakes. So let's talk about the importance of being prepared. With earthquakes, we know that we can't predict them, we can't prevent them, so the only thing we can do is prepare for them. We encourage people to be ready by having a go kit. Above and beyond what people do to be prepared in their own homes and their neighborhoods, it's very important that older adults have their own go kit that they can grab and go in the event of an emergency. 
For example, here at the Department of Aging, we have a go kit that we suggest people start. And you can do this by just using an old backpack or finding some other bag that can easily close and carry the few items that we're going to talk to you about. One of the most important parts for older adults is to make sure that they have a seven-day supply of their prescription medications. You can get these pill boxes at various locations, and what we suggest that you do is that you fill it up so that you have the seven days' worth of medications in the event that you have to evacuate and be gone. We also encourage people to have an inventory of any important things that they have in their household or information that they need to have recorded. And you can do it on one of these small little memory sticks. A picture of your pet is very important because after all, one cat may look like another cat and a dog is a dog. So if you have a picture, then at least you can have some help in finding them. So the important thing is to be ready for an emergency. Make sure that you have your medications ready and you have a go kit ready to go with you. Be ready. Today we're at the headquarters of Los Angeles' uh, Department of Animal Services, right in downtown LA. And we'll be speaking with a couple of very interesting people. First, the general manager to my left, Brenda Barnett. Welcome. Thanks for being here. Thank you. And uh, Cindy Sanchez, who has a business in Pasadena called Planet Doggy. Did I get it? Yes. Planet did. Doggy. Great. And to, we're going to talk today. Uh, about a little known or a little considered aspect of disaster preparedness, especially as it applies to seniors. How often do any of us think about what we would have to be called upon to do if, God forbid, there was a major disaster in LA? How would we take care of our pets? And I thought, interestingly, in the beginning uh, conversations, so much of what we're going to talk about for pets will help seniors too. Absolutely. Is there a kind of a rule of thumb about how many days you might have to prepare yourself for in case of, well, let's say an earthquake, which we're famous for? I don't know that there's a number of days. Mm -hmm. I, I think that, you know, you just want to make sure you have all the supplies that you would need. So normally if you have prescription medicines for yourself or your pet, you're mm -hmm. going to have probably a must supply right. that you could have. Uh, we, we usually recommend, it would be interesting to see if we recommend the same amount of water. We <laughs> usually say it's good to have five gallons of water and that mm -hmm. sort of thing. I think for, for us, the big thing I would want to emphasize is make sure that your companion animal has a microchip. Yes. And whether that is a dog, a cat, or a bunny, uh, a microchip is the, you know, that's a universal um, sort of language that we can get a companion animal back home. Certainly if you live in the city of Los Angeles, we require that dogs have a dog license right. and we provide a tag. And with that tag on their collar, we can also get the animal home to that, to the owner. Right. And, the, and we have, we don't license cats, but we have voluntary licensing of cats. For right. $5, you can get a tag. I think what, what's real important to emphasize on this is if there is a big enough disaster that someone says, I do need to separate you temporarily from your companion, animal with those forms of identification you can entrust your companion animal to one of our officers one of our staff at one of the six shelters throughout the city and we will hold that animal and we will reunite you wow that's very important yes uh, absolutely we, we learned in the run-up to this show how many people and Katrina would not leave their homes absolutely. without their right. pets and put right. themselves at risk and in cases uh, lost their lives right, right. Um, you got to be smart about this uh, uh, Cindy, you, know, you and I have had a chance to talk, and you brought along so many things that I, they seem so simple, but I, I'm not sure I have some of these items in my house. Can you just kind of give, give me the basics of the five things you would recommend? Well, the five things, one is um, you definitely would want a leash or some kind of tag, and like Brenda stated, microchipping is really important. Right. However, if, if, they're, if an animal control officer or somebody's not able to to grab the animal or uh, contain the animal, at least they have a collar with some kind of um, ID on it, right. a phone number, an out-of-state phone number, which would you want to use so that at least they can call them saying, hey, Mrs. Smith has your pet dog right. who got out of the house. Um, another thing is, is that especially in for disasters or an emergency, just the same, is to have a whistle. Because if you fell or if you are not able to get out of your home or you're stuck somewhere, a whistle is a universal sign for help. Right. You're going to draw attention to yourself. If your animal is injured and you're not able to transport, this is where the whistle would come in. Right. And definitely, 
food and water, and I agree with the, the, the amount of water that needs to be done. Uh, it's a little hard to carry that water, so yes. again, it would be shelter in place on that and your food and water bowls. Well, what uh, about this cute little yellow this bag little, here? This little bag is a first aid kit. Mm -hmm. um, a lot of people have first aid kits. They also have it in their uh, medicine cabinet in their bathrooms. Mm -hmm. However, if you just put a little um, bag together with your first aid kit, here I have a date because this kind of reminds everybody when you need to check it. Use by. Use by. <laughs> right. So you want to make sure that if there's a disaster, you don't want to use expired medicines, right. expired items in there that that is detrimental to your animal. Well, but we never know where we're going to be when something bad happens, and you might be separated from your pet. What do you recommend in that case? Is the neighbor the, someone you, you might rely on? Always good to know your neighbors and talk to people mm -hmm. ahead of time and to find out if they would be able to stand in for you. Mm -hmm. uh, family members, neighbors, even knowing where some of the local hotels are that are pet friendly in uh -huh. case you had to go for a short period of time. That's a great idea. But for a lot of apartment dwellers or people who are moving around, they don't take the time to make those connections and that can be very important. Absolutely. Well, you know, just, and, and I think we wouldn't recommend that if you had to evacuate that you leave your pet, mm -hmm. if at all possible, take the pet with you. But then if you do encounter an animal control officer or someone who works with our, one of our six shelters, you can safely then turn the animal over to them if the shelter won't take both you and your pet. I got you. Yeah. We live in car-friendly Los Angeles, which means we may have to take the pets with us. And a little handy-dandy thing like this, the, the wow. portable water bowl, how easy is this? I mean, come on, just right in the back of the seat in the pocket. Right. You know, it's pretty simple and a, and a big bottle of water, and you're good at least for a few hours. Um, what other things can you recommend? That, uh, well, basically... Oh, I know, before, I, before we go there, how about this? The standard pet carrier. Absolutely. Absolutely. You can put your cat or a dog in there. Right. Cats are a little more difficult, so you want to start desensitizing them. Cats like to go in boxes and paper bags, so you can also put a paper bag on the outside, and they'll come run in and out. So right. when it's time for you to evacuate, the cat will naturally go in there as a hiding place, and then you have all your items in there. And, of course, the handy treats. You want your treats, right. and, and your water can be on the side of that. I got you. You also want uh, your documentation on top of that. You can right. tape it and put it in a baggie. Um, this is a form here that you can put together. So here's Cindy's form that has uh, the out-of-state family, the family member, pet-friendly hotel, emergency vet, um, maybe two of them, boarding facilities, uh, local animal shelters. These are all things that's, that uh, Cindy had on her list that I'm reading for you. <laughs> <laughs> but it's a handy list and it, yes. it, it, it takes five minutes to put five all that Five minutes in to put that together. Now I think it's particularly important for our seniors who become very attached to their pets mm. to uh, at the same time they're thinking about making preparations for their pet if something bad should happen to take a little time to do it for themselves as yes. well, uh, yes. the contact numbers and all the rest. I thank you both so much. This has been so informative, and I'm, when I get home, I'm going to get busy. <laughs> thank you both. Thank, thank you. you. Hi, I'm Captain Stacy Gerlich from the Los Angeles Fire Department, and I want to welcome you to today's Caregiver Corner. So I want to talk with you today about family preparedness. Uh, earlier we heard about pet preparedness and taking care of um, our seniors and ourselves and having our uh, equipment ready in, in the event of a disaster. So I'm really going to focus this afternoon on a, a specialized kit that everyone should have. So we talk about three things that are really important. That is to make a kit, have a plan, and be prepared. So in my go kit, what I have for you today is I have a very small first aid kit that we can utilize in the event that we incur any accidents or any injuries. I also have a uh, cellular charger. So in the event that you have a cell phone or an iPad in today's world, um, this is something that you could place that apparatus on and it will charge it for you should you not have your uh, available cords. So other things that we have in our kit are uh, meals. This is what we call a uh, meal ready to eat, uh, otherwise known as a military type uh, meal. A flashlight. This flashlight also has a radio 
and an alarm on it and it's kind of a three-in-one deal so you only have to have one piece of uh, equipment. Um, other things also that are important depending upon um, yourselves for safety. This is like a rescue tube. This is just a simple little kit and inside there's a glow light there's also a mylar blanket, so if you're in inclement weather or you need some heat, you can use that. And then one of the most important pieces of equipment in here is a whistle, because you can blow a whistle a lot longer and louder than you can yell at the top of your lungs. So these are some of the things that you would want to have in your kit. Again, because we're, we're talking about the senior population, um, maybe some diapers or things in case you get stranded for days on end and you cannot get to a restroom. And I always think most important is having some clothing. Maybe a sweatshirt for inclement weather, an extra pair of jeans so that in case it gets cold, a t-shirt or whichever you are most comfortable with, an extra pair of socks also because if your feet are wet it becomes very uncomfortable. Now these are, you know, some of the things that I put in my go kit, but you can put whatever you think is most necessary for yourselves, and don't forget about your pets. We also need to have the kits for our pets. It's very important. And these are just, again, depending on the size and your ability to carry something, a backpack is always better because you can put it on and you have the use of both hands. So this is really important. And small denominations of cash. If you only have a $50 bill and you need a gallon of water, it's going to cost you $50. Things will not be working. They will not be able to make change. You can put these together however you like. Packs of 25, packs of 10, it's entirely up to you. Most of us get very nervous when we don't have things that can help us to see in the dark and also when we're not able to be in contact with the news media and what's happening around us. So the most important aspects to remember are to have a kit and make a plan and be informed. You should all have what we call a family plan. The family plan is something that you can very simply keep in your purse or your wallet it's a ready form that is available on ready.gov. It's a simple piece of paper, and on this piece of paper, it asks for very specific information, like an out of area or out of state contact with the phone number. It also allows you the ability to put your medications on here. And as important as the name of your medication, you also need to put the milligrams that you take and how many times a day you take that. This information is something that should always be with you. Uh, aside from that information printed on paper, you should have extra medication with you in the event that you are stranded or you're on your own for, the common term has always been 72 hours, but we really should be thinking about two to three weeks. This is how we can better prepare ourselves and our families and, and our pets and be ready when that next disaster happens and be part of the solution rather than part of the problem. And on behalf of the Los Angeles Fire Department, thank you for joining us on today's Caregiver Corner. Now I know we gave you a lot of information today and I hope you take the time to consider it and act on it. It's really very important. We need to take better care of our seniors and our pets, especially in an emergency. Because if you see one of these babies rolling down your street, something's going on and you need to be prepared. Thanks for watching Aging Well in LA.